bit here for a while trying to get this something going we've tried a little bit of wheat that moisture was too high yesterday so we kind of put that aside this the last 30 acres or 25 30 acres of oats was wet so we kind of put that aside this was all the yesterday and today we ran samples again the oats i believe is good to go it is good to go we ran a sample in it was it was dry there wasn't a whole lot left so i left the one combine set and ready to go into wheat and so we're just finishing up here by myself and the one combine got one pass actually left here and then this field of oats was done so have you ever wonder what you know, weeds do we're in an area here where it's wild oats is actually our call for it, not anything else. You say, why don't you spray it? Well, it's pretty hard to spray wild oats out of oats. And I'm gonna just show you something here. And that is, so here, if you look at my current yield versus my my field average. And again, that's not gonna be 100% accurate, those numbers we'll find out when we're done the field, but um, it's half. So the weeds that are in here are are sitting at whatever they're they've taken and eaten up half of the yield. So we're instead of 125 to 130 on well, it's 128 average. We're we were looking at a consistent spot there where we were 60, 65 bushels an acre. I've seen it as low as 30, 35 in those really bad areas of wild oats, and that is a bugger. So. As you can see, I got my main swather man here with me, and he's trying to help me out here finish up. And apparently we got one extra little swath here, and we're gonna go back and take that one up. So we are coming close to the end of this field. That chain there, that's for my pickup. And often we've had issues with that spring and that chain because our uh, combines hammer this straw up really fine, which is good if we weren't wanting to bail. But because we try to bail behind our combines, uh, the longer the straw, the better. If it's too small, it often, the straw is small, it often plugs up there. It goes up here into the into the pickup and that chain that I was showing you that that picks the that's what drives the pickup and that feeds into here and if the straw is small that's when I uh, turn that chain so. we got 40 bales made so far I've counted all of our <clears throat> I counted all of our bales that we have back at home and I'm thinking if we make a hundred we should be good enough for two years roughly um, halfway tempted to make a little bit more this year because we have a lot of straw last year when we were baling I was getting on half mile I would get about three bales-ish, two to three bales on a half mile. And this year I am getting uh, anywhere from five to six. So pretty much double the amount of bales and it's way easier baling. It's, there's uh, lots of straw. It feeds really nice. That's good straw, so easy to make bales. I don't have to drive a lot. And they're good and dry, they're good bales, so yeah. Okay, so I just did, uh, as we're coming to the end here, I just 
to the quick map in order for me to, oh, that's a bit of grumble grumble. Of course, you're not going to hear that or feel that the same as I did, but Parker's butt just about jiggled off the seat. So, anyway, we're coming to the end. We got about 100 feet to go, and of course, we get a pile right now. Parker, who made that file? I don't yeah, know. Dad, yeah, I blame Dad. That's a good deal. He's not here to defend himself. That's perfect. According to the math, field up 220 acres, and we need uh, just a hair over 30,000 to get to 137. So we'll see how we're doing. 33 hit. 30,330 Okay, perfect. That sounds good. I'll do the math. We might, uh, I got 88 bales uh, off this little area. It was over a little bit more. Not sure really what I was hoping for, but when I added up all my bales back home, I was thought if we could get close to 100, that should be good. So we'll see what we end up doing. Whether we end up going for more, see whether we uh, do some more oats straw or not. I got uh, next thing on the list is wheat, and Daryl and Dylan are in the process of getting the combines going. I think they got one unit going right now, and they're converting the other one over. Uh, and they're dropping straw there right around my yard, so. While I was bailing out here though, uh, we've actually got uh, over half of them cleaned up. Not like you can see it all, but uh, Peter and my boy Parker, they've been busy picking bales, so uh, yeah, they've got two loads brought in and they got, they got two, two small loads left, so yeah. Feels kind of weird that this early into harvest we already got our oats, uh, oats straw done for the year and hopefully it won't be long and we'll have our wheat starting as well. So, first glance, there is still some immature ones in here. But it looks a lot better than yesterday. I guess my feeling is going to be if I can get it, I should pick a number now so that when I get the test, I won't change my mind. But I think as long as it's under 18, I'm gonna at least load the one Super B. So there you go, 18 is my number today. Okay, now we're gonna run a sample. That comes from the combine. Just clean it all up. So. We got our 250 grams. We got our 25 and a half degrees. And what are we gonna do? Tell is now. We're definitely wetter. 53. And we're testing about 16%. So we are golden. There is no reason why this won't work. It is 16. So we're going to do a truckload. See what that comes in at. Okay, so I got my little Milwaukee air compressor airing up my header. Got it set at 100 psi. We're at, we're at 41, so I'm going to leave that do its charging thing. And then I'm going to, uh, I got to change chopper speed on the combine. And that's because we're hoping to bail this field. And we learned a little trick that if you put it in slow speed, it doesn't chop it up nearly as much. Which a year ago I thought was absolutely crazy because there's so much straw going through there. How in the world does it all get through that little walks in slow speed? But it worked awesome. Makes bailing a breeze compared to what it was. So 
Just got to swap one pulley out here quickly. By the time that gets done, the header should be aired up and I should basically be ready to go. Okay, I got back just as Daryl was doing the final touches with uh, that combine to get it ready. It's the end of the day, but we're gonna, he's gonna do an up and down just to get some wheat through it. Hopefully everything works good. Tomorrow we uh, are combining, helping combine the, that food grains bank field that we uh, seeded earlier on this uh, spring. We're doing that tomorrow and there's gonna be our two combines in cart, uh, neighbor's got two John Deere combines in his cart, and then uh, other neighbor's got three Lexians and their cart. So yeah, shouldn't take long, should be fun. Seven combines in a field that I know of, there might be more, not sure. So yeah, hopefully everything is dialed in for that. So nice and convenient. I'm gonna just take a look at the straw. Let's see what kind of straw I gotta deal with for baling. Daryl suggested that I do an up and down to see how many bales we would get. And it's not the it's not the driest. Probably be best if I could do that tomorrow. And then we're done. So hopefully we're done this field at least. Shouldn't take long. They've probably done oh 20 acres or so maybe. instead.
jump in with Dylan, go park this thing at the end of the field and go for a ride. When we did our trial run yesterday, the yield was uh, looking actually unreal. Uh, but again, not sure what it's going to be like at the end of the field. Forgive me. Guy's been running it all day with boots on. Oh, his what a guy! Wow. This is the last load, Peter. For the day. Ah, oh, yeah. We won't go any later than this. It's too late for us. We need our sleep. We need our beauty rest. five acres or so. And you start. Anyway, tune in for tomorrow's video. We'll be doing that three grains bank and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch me. Have a good one.